Hello again, everyone. Welcome back um, to Sociology with me, Lauren, your teacher. Very exciting stuff. Um, so today we're going to have a look at the new right, um, which is the next theory um, on our journey through the theories of the family. Um, but before we do that, I have just got for you the key concepts from the previous section. So here they are. Um, they should be in this order uh, in your pack. So just pause the screen for a minute and check your answers if you wish to. Um, and I'm going to move on. So there they are. So we're looking now at page 27 in your resource pack. Um, page 27 is the beginning of the new right. Now we've talked a bit about the new right before, <clears throat> so you know a little bit about them. Um, I've put this image up on the PowerPoint initially, uh, which as you can see is of a bulldozer bulldozing the welfare state. The welfare state being um, the government ways of helping people in society via things like benefits, via the NHS, um, old people's homes, that kind of thing. Um, and this is obviously an extreme version. Um, they're not going around bulldozing old people's homes. Um, but the new right view is that the welfare state has created huge, huge problems in our society. Um, so first thing to note, this is at the top of page 27, is that they are a political movement, really. Um, they sort of provide a theoretical basis for conservative policies for the Conservative Party and particularly influenced Margaret Thatcher in the 80s. So they are a conservative, they take a conservative view, they're very committed to sort of traditional ways of doing things. Um, they want to conserve society, that's what conservative means really. They are anti-feminist, they are basically the polar opposite to feminists because they think that um, one of the big problems in society is that all those women have uh, got too much freedom. Women's liberation has been the cause of all of the problems in society today. It's contributed to moral breakdown of the family, moral breakdown of society. I'm trying to be impartial here, um, but obviously, you know, that's not something I personally agree with anyway. Um, anyway, so feminists, women, freedom, all of that, not good for society. They could also be described as anti-society in that they kind of um, don't really like this idea of society being all together and supporting each other and working together and particularly of the government supporting members of society. Um, so that's why it says in your pack, the nanny state, they call it the nanny state. It's as if the state's become like a babysitter. It's as if the government has been babysitting families um, and they think that that's a bad idea because it leads to something called a dependency culture where people think it's the norm to rely on the government rather than rely on themselves um, and the new right are arguing that this is happening too much there are too many people relying on the government instead of themselves it's the kind of thing you might read in like daily mail and stuff um, but they have been highly influential in many ways. As I say, particularly in the 1980s in Thatcher's time, um, and also since the coalition government of 2010 um, and, and today with the Conservative Party being in power. Um, it's also linked to this idea of neoliberalism. So remember the word liberal is about freedom. But it's neoliberalism because it's it's not necessarily like freedom for everyone. The idea is um, of kind of freedom for everyone to be in competition with each other. Um, if you work hard, then you deserve more reward. Um, businesses can compete against each other um, for the, the most profit. So it's neoliberal in the sense that it's sort of less regulated to make things fair. Um, and instead, less regulation means that people have the opportunity to become richer and to become more successful if they put the work in. So um, in the box underneath, it kind of talks about the new right and neoliberal views on society. So they think that society has become over regulated. We're too heavily sort of 
um, regulated by the government, for example. <clears throat> Uh, they think that individuals should be responsible for themselves and free, liberal, free, free from state intervention. They think that society actually would benefit from free markets whereby the economy isn't really controlled by the government. And that means that people can do whatever it takes to get more and more and more profit. So, for example, um, at the moment, supermarkets, not right now, actually, I think they've changed it because of the current crisis. But um, generally speaking, supermarkets are, have to obey a law which says that they are not allowed to collude with each other to fix prices for basic items. And that's because there was a time when supermarkets got together and they all said, right, we're all going to charge this much for milk. Um, and it was like more than necessary and more than usual. Let's say it was like four pounds for some for a small bottle of milk or something. And because they were all doing it, that meant that customers didn't really have anywhere to go um, for cheaper milk. So they all had to pay this extortionate price. And therefore, people um, were able, the, the supermarkets were able to make lots and lots of profit. So now they're regulated so that they can't do that. Whereas the new right think they should be free to do that if they want to um, and to make profit in any way that they wish. I hope that makes sense. Send me an email if it doesn't. Um, also, also, you could research it. It was um, price fixing of dairy products. I'm not sure when it was, but if you were to Google that, you'd probably find it. OK, um, they also argue for more privatisation. So um, privatising public sector things. Again, letting businesses take over um, prior, things that are currently in the public sector uh, in order to perhaps make profit and perhaps make the standards better. So that really links to what we learned about in education, which I'll come to in a second. <clears throat> they believe that society is breaking down. Um, society is losing all of its traditions and all of its values. Um, and we're experiencing something called a moral decay, according to the new right. Uh, they think that people have like a lack of respect for law and order. People are irresponsible. And um, a key thinker called Charles Murray even goes as far as to say that there is a feral underclass. We'll come to that um, in a bit. So going back to marketization then, um, there is a question in your pack which says, how is marketization a new right set of policies. Um, and we talked about education in terms of um, marketization in Chubb and Moe's work and how they argue that um, there should be more competition between schools in order to drive up standards and make them better. Um, and that is happening in lots of areas as well, like the NHS, for example. So um, do you remember that we watched the Panorama documentary called Profits Before Pupils? And that showed how um, academy trusts were being run by business owners who were making profit rather than um, supporting schools. Now, marketization isn't always a bad thing and privatization is not always a bad thing because business owners do have the knowledge and the contacts and the resources to probably get the best quality products and um, systems and, and all that kind of thing to make hospitals run better and to make schools run better. And when they're run by good people, they work really well. <clears throat> but the only problem is that sometimes, as we saw in that documentary, um, the business owners may well put profits before giving quality products and services. So that's a bit of a criticism. So moving on to thinking about the family. Oh, sorry. So you have got a question that says, how is marketization a new right set of policies? Um, and hopefully you can write something in there about how um, the new right want this like liberal free market situation um, where people have to compete for things. And, and it's about privatization. And that's how marketization is a new right policy. So moving on to the new right and the family, then um, they believe that the over generous welfare state has led to a dependency culture, which has encouraged single parent families who cannot socialize their children adequately, in their opinion. 
So they're saying that by creating benefits, um, it encourages women to leave their partners if they want to and encourages them to be single parent families. Whereas if they didn't have benefits, they'd have to just stay um, and put up with it. And then they wouldn't rely on benefits. They'd rely on their husband instead. They think that the traditional nuclear family is best as it can support itself and socialise children. So similar to Parsons view um, that you've got those two roles of the instrumental role, which does the supporting of the family economically um, and the expressive role and the role of the family in socialising children. So they think that traditional nuclear family is best and single parent families can't do both of the both of those things um, adequately on their own. They also argue that people and families should be forced to stand on their own two feet and not rely on the state for benefits. So have a quick read of that, please, um, on page 27 in your pack. So it's the box um, at the bottom, bottom half of the page. And then you've got a question at the bottom, which says, according to the new right, what social changes have occurred to cause the traditional family to be under threat. So I want you to think of some of the ideas that I've just been talking about, about women, what's changed for women, what's changed in the government and that kind of thing to have a go at answering that question for yourself. So pause this video, have a read and see if you can answer that question. Okay, so then we're gonna move on to looking at our first key thinker. Um, which is Charles Murray. So Charles Murray was, uh, is, an, is an American and he's been very influential in American politics in particular, American right wing politics. Um, but also Thatcher took on some of his ideas as well. So um, I've got on my PowerPoint that he was writing in 1984. In your packet says 1990. But, you know, this is because he was writing at both of those times. Um, so you get the idea of the sort of era that he's writing in. <clears throat> so Murray is the the kind of main man who talks about this idea of a dependency culture um, and the creation of something that he calls the underclass. So this is um, not the working class, not people that are poor but still working. This is the underclass. So this is what he sees as like the real kind of um, decay of society. Uh, and he includes in this description single parent families, anyone kind of living on benefits, etc. It's a really nice guy, Murray. Um, and that, those kinds of people. So he believes that society is falling into this moral decay um, and ultimately we should get rid of benefits in order to um, help society and fix society. So I'd like you to pause again, please, and read about Murray's view on page 28, highlighting any key points. And then I've just got here a couple of quotes for you from the man himself um, in one of his books or one of his speeches or something that he's, that he's written and, and said. So the first one here is um, the responsibilities of marriage induce young men to settle down, focus and get to work. So he sees marriage as really important because it makes people, men in particular, uh, want to work to support their family. And obviously for him, that's much better than being lazy and not working and relying on benefits. Makes sense. So he thinks marriage is a good idea. And this quote here is about his idea of what the underclass is. By underclass, I do not mean people who are merely poor, but people at the margins of society, unsocialised and often violent. The chronic criminal is part of the underclass, especially the violent chronic criminal. But so are parents who mean well, but who cannot provide for themselves, who give nothing back to the neighbourhood and whose children are the despair of the teachers who have to deal with them. So just take a minute to pause this, read those again and see what you think about them, really. Um, sort of think about them, discuss them with your family if you've got people around you that you can discuss them with. But for me, I think this really shows how he sees these people on, on benefits as being so far removed, like from himself and from mainstream society that he basically thinks they're like feral, um, violent. And yeah, so you can make your own opinion about that um, and what you think about that. You may agree with parts of it. You may think it's disgusting up to you, really. So have a think. 
Um, another thing to consider is um, some of you might have watched this program before called Benefits Street. Now, um, in many ways, this is kind of like a, a tool to further criminalise those underclass people that Murray is talking about. So Murray would probably like this programme, really, because it points out all these things that he sees as problems in society. I've not actually even watched it myself, to be honest, um, but I know roughly what it's about. Um, and I'd like you to have a think and write down some ideas about what Murray would think about the people on this street and try and include some concepts that we've been talking about, like dependency culture, um, dysfunctional, the overgenerous welfare state, moral decay. What would Murray say about the people on this street? And if you want, you can write it sort of in his voice, if you like, um, as sort of a, a speech or something or an article that he'd be writing about these families. So pause again and have a go. So finally, you've got a question uh, in your pack which asks you to research the cost of sending a child to nursery school, as in like a really young child before they go to school um, for a day and explain why single parent families will need support with this from the government. So you do some research yourself, first of all, <clears throat> pause this video. And um, once you've done that, I will tell you that I did a bit of research myself and found that um, a nursery in our local area, one particular example, costs £70 per day to send your child or £237 a week. They do a bit of a discount for a longer time or £948 per month. £948 per month. So that is a lot of money. So then we can start thinking about single parent families, um, usually a woman living on her own with her children. Where is she getting money from? Is childcare a realistic option for these people? Um, if she's going out to work to earn money, then she'll have to get childcare. But if she's working in sort of a traditional working class job, that may well be all of her money then gone. So then she's going to need benefits to help pay for food and that kind of thing. So in that sense, we can probably understand why a mother might think, well, there's no point in me going to work. I might as well stay at home and look after my own children um, rather than earn money just to spend it on childcare. Third thing I'd like you to think about is um, see if you can find any information on universal credit, which is the benefit system that we now have. Um, and have a look at how much people generally receive and whether you think this is sufficient for people to um, support their family. It's particularly like a single parent um, to support their family. So the reason that we're asking you to think about this is as a bit of a criticism of Murray's view. Um, he says that we shouldn't give benefits to anyone, including single parent families, because it encourages them to just rely on the state. Um, but perhaps the state needs to do something about the wages that people earn or something, because otherwise they literally wouldn't be able to survive. <clears throat> OK, our next key thinkers are Dennis and Erdos. Um, and Dennis and Erdos were researching single parent families in the 1980s. Um, and they argued that a big increase in single parent families has led to a decline in male role models um, for particularly boys um, and that children from single parent families have poor life chances and are inadequately socialised. In particular, boys are irresponsible, undisciplined and antisocial. So they think that fatherless families, in particular single parent families, but particularly fatherless ones, are the biggest problem in society. Um, these are just some quotes from their book. <clears throat> Children from lone parent households are twice as likely as those from two parent households to be admitted to hospital with injuries. Children living with their mother and a cohabiting boyfriend who is not their father are 33 times more likely to be abused than those living with their married biological parents. The disadvantages suffered by children of lone parents cannot simply be explained away as the product of low income house, sorry, low household incomes. So they're saying it's not because they're poor. It's actually a problem with the structure of a single parent family, which means that 
children are so disadvantaged if they come from those families. There may be some of you listening to this who are from single parent families, and I was raised in a single parent family as well. And, um, you know, we may be offended by that. But I think I've done all right for myself, and I think you will too. So let's ignore them. Anyway, we need to learn about them. <clears throat> so um, just quickly, before you look at what's on the screen now, I'd like you to now have a quick read of Dennis and Erdos's view um, in your pack. So pause the video, have a read, page 28. And once you've had a read, um, I'd like you to have a look at this slide here. Um, so this is a policy that was introduced in 2014 um, called the Married Couples Tax Break or Tax Allowance. It's called both of those things. Um, so it says keep more of your money with marriage allowance. So this here is um, a kind of a description of what it actually is. So pause the screen, have a little read. So basically what this does is it allows um, a married couple to share the tax allowance. So if the woman doesn't work, then the man can have her tax free allowance so that the man then pay, pays less tax, for example. So this is a really big kind of um, incentive for people to be married. So therefore, I want you to stop, pause, have a think. Why would Dennis and Erdos support this policy and write it down for me on a separate piece of paper for some ideas? of why Dennis Nerdos would support this policy. So pause and think. But to evaluate Dennis Nerdos, you've got a question in your pack. Um, and it, it says, provide an evaluation point to argue against Dennis Nerdos. Hint, who else can act as a role model? So here you're thinking about, do children in single parent families always lack a male role model? Does it have to be the father? that's acting as a male role model. And just because the parents aren't together, does it mean that um, the fathers are not around? So again, on a separate piece of paper, I want you to think about all the other male role models that um, boys might have just because their father might be absent. And also think about in single parent families, is the father always completely absent? Which leads us on to Reynolds' point, which is described at the bottom of that page. Um, and Reynolds argues that often, particularly black single parent families, are perceived negatively by the government and by wider society because there's this assumption that just because the parents aren't together, that the male isn't around, the father isn't around. But Reynolds found that actually, more often than not, um, the absent father is not actually that absent. He is in the child's life a lot, even though they don't live together. Um, perhaps spending weekends together and that kind of thing. So have a read about that. And then you've got a question at the bottom, which says, how does this research challenge the new right thinkers ideas about single parent families? So that's for you to, to word in your own way. How is Reynolds argument going against what the new right argue about single parent families? Then I've got a few tasks for you. So um, on page 29, you've got an interesting article about sort of a moral panic around fatherless families. So this article is sort of arguing that the whole of society has been panicking about fatherless families for some time and thinks that they're a problem. So I've just put this little bubble here to explain what a moral panic is, um, because that's in your first question. Is a moral panic about fatherless families actually based on evidence? Um, and yeah, have a read of the article, see what you think. <clears throat> moral panic is when the whole of society is worried or concerned about something in quite an extreme way. Um, so for example, there's been big moral panics about knife crime recently in the news. There's also been like, as soon as there's a terrorist attack, everyone's suddenly scared of, of terrorists. And there might even be a rise in Islamophobia. That's a moral panic. Whole of society is panicking. And then you've got your key thinkers list <clears throat> and your key concepts grid. And I'll go through, through those with you in our next lesson. And finally, we've got a big evaluation point, um, evaluating both functionalism and the new right, <clears throat> which is that they both really praise this traditional nuclear family as being the best family type, but they ignore the fact that in the family, a, not a lot of the time, but it's not um, uncommon for there to be conflict and abuse. So feminists in particular 
have presented this um, view that the traditional nuclear family is not beneficial for everyone by any stretch and that actually it's not good for women who are most likely to suffer domestic violence. Now this can be a bit of a tough read um, so just a bit of a warning there that there is obviously talk in this about domestic violence and abuse um, but if you're feeling up to it, um, have a read of page 31 and answer those questions. And there's also an article about domestic violence during the World Cup, which was a um, really fascinating thing that um, when the World Cup was on and England were obviously doing all right. <clears throat> but that meant that um, they were going out and drinking more often. Men were going out and drinking more often during the day. And we saw a really sharp increase in domestic violence um, and there was lots of things going around the internet as well about how like women are worried about if England lose the match because of the consequences that might bring for them at home. So a really good sort of contemporary example of this dark side of the family happening in real life. Once you've done that, that's it for today. Um, there is a 10 marker on page 33 so if you want to have a little look at it you can do but I'm going to go through that one with you. Um, in our next video instalment. I'm going to try and figure out how to sort of write it and plan it along with you. Um, so yes, enjoy. Thanks very much for watching. And as usual, email me if you've got any questions. You could always comment as well, actually. Um, cool. Thank you. Bye.